So I'm a religious person. Specifically, I'm a Christian, more specifically a Mormon. Thus, upon taking up my interest in Jungian typology, the natural question arises, what personality was Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ? Asking such a question really opens up a pretty big can of worms. To begin with, can Jesus be typed at all? Many of those who believe in his divinity, and I'm going to split this into two groups, those who believe in his divinity and those who don't, um, starting with those who believe in his divinity, the answer is no, because a personality would seem to place limitations on him and interfere with his mission as savior of mankind. For instance, if he were, say, an INTJ, then wouldn't that alienate him from all of the SFJs in humanity? And wouldn't there be the potential for his repressed SE to possibly blindside him in some way? Wouldn't that privilege all INTJs as having some sort of special access to him? Wouldn't that make it possible for SFJs to argue that he doesn't actually know what's best for them? I don't have a complete answer to these questions, but I will say a few things. First is that these concerns mostly have to do with the concerns regarding relating to him and so forth mostly have to do with the resurrected Savior with whom one may commune in prayer, fasting, sacraments, etc. And seeing as coming back from the dead is pretty out of the ordinary, there is no reason that personality couldn't be transcended at that point too. But as for Jesus while on the earth, subject to pain and toil and death, I think that the possession of a personality would be a necessary part of that mortal experience, just as necessary as subjection to gravity or the need to eat and drink. As for myself, I am of the opinion that the mission of Christ could be carried out with equal effectiveness by an individual of any of the 16 personalities, granted that they were, in fact, worthy to be the Christ. One alternate reality, for instance, might have an ENTP savior, another might have an ISTJ. His personality does not imply divine favoritism, any more than his Israeli genes or his profession as a carpenter. If we believed his personality would in any way interfere with his role as our savior, then we might as well say that his Jewish upbringing, or his life of knowing he is the Messiah, or his traumatic experience of crucifixion would all interfere far more. I, for instance, have never been crucified. I don't plan on ever being crucified. So I'm already cut off from him on that point. I can't relate to what that would be like. And if I find him to be an ESTJ in personality, then I also wouldn't relate to him there either. But that doesn't change the fact that he's my savior. But let me also say this. This video series of podcasts is not designed really as an argument. I have no explicit point I'm trying to make. I'm not trying to convince you of any specific type that I already have in mind. Um, I am simply going through Jesus' life in as close to chronological order as I can make out, anyway, hopping between the Gospels as needed to track down every passage that gives some indication towards Jesus' personality. I may very well find that, as the tradition states, the Jesuses found in each of the four Gospels are utterly distinct and irreconcilable with each other because each Gospel is meant for a different Kirsian temperament. As IDR Labs pointed out in their, their video, their reply to Arizona INTJ. Um, I, on the other hand, I would hope uh, this to be the case, that there is a coherent single image behind those different lenses that will reveal itself upon examination. So we're taking this little journey together. And so as I sniff out those passages most relevant to our task and review them in light of the original Greek and uh, our understanding of ancient Jewish culture, um, I hope that uh, we'll be able to, to find something out together. So I'm going to do my best here. At this point, however, I need to provide answers to the second group, those who don't believe in the divinity of Christ, obviously you can tell that I do, and my goal is to make that neither here nor there, although you'll probably be sort of annoyed that I keep on uh, referring to him and believing in the things that are actually in the account. Anyway, well, here, let me just say this. Um, 
I need to provide some answers, namely those who don't believe in the divinity of Christ. Many of them are just as skeptical of typing Jesus, at least in my experience, not because he is expected to transcend personality in some way, but because they are skeptical, skeptical about the reliability of the records available. I'm thinking specifically of the reliability of the four canonical gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, where they're really telling the truth about everything. Um, my answer is simply that if the Gospels are not to be trusted as historical documents, then we certainly have no chance at all of typing Jesus, because we just don't have enough information from other sources. Furthermore, while I am always trying to keep my ears wide open to what modern scholarship has to say and not lose my head because this or that is put into doubt by the evidence, which happens a lot, um, I believe that the canonical Gospels contain a level of complexity, grit, and sincerity, and most importantly, restraint that is not found in legends or fancies, but in real-life recountings of events, or at least the honest attempt at that, as understood by people. But that's just my opinion, that's my intuition, and frankly my faith. I'm not a scholar, and therefore I can only undertake this project honestly if I insist that I am not attempting to type the so-called historical Jesus, but only the Jesus portrayed by the canonical Gospels. Anyway, thank you for your support. I hope you enjoy it and find it enlightening, and um, I can't think of anything else to say right now, so uh, I will see you in the next podcast.